If you go to any bank in Pakistan today and ask for information about what debit cards they offer, chances are you will be given a pitch to get a Visa or MasterCard debit card. This is despite the fact that the State Bank of Pakistan has recently asked all banks to push PayPak, a local domestic payment scheme, as a priority card. Why would the SPP want to do this? Because PayPak is cheaper and it is in the SPP's interest to encourage more and more people joining the bank population. For the same reason, it is not in the interest of the banks to push PayPak because they have been making a killing of Visa and MasterCard cards. Taimur Hassan delves into the murky battle between Pakistani banks and PayPak. In 2002, Habib Bank Limited joined the ATM network and the switch was rebranded as OneLink. Initially, OneLink was not labelled as a separate entity and was registered as a guarantee limited company. Now, at the time ATM interoperability was achieved, the State Bank of Pakistan mandated banks to issue ATM-only cards. These were the proprietary cards issued by banks, not branded as Visa or MasterCard, for cash withdrawals at ATMs only. These were the times when ATM cards used to cost around only rupees 100 in annual fee and could be used for ATM withdrawals only. Now, Visa and MasterCard had been in Pakistan since 1994 when they were brought here by Citibank. The problem was that the Pakistani population has never warmed to the idea of credit cards that they were offering. So when one link became a thing, Visa and MasterCard told banks that they could brand ATM-only proprietary cards from the bank as Visa or MasterCard branded debit cards. And customers that could previously only use their cards just to withdraw cash from the ATM could now use their cards for purchases at shops as well as on POS machines. Now seemingly there is nothing wrong with the system. The banks giving you a card with an ATM and POS transaction facility is an ideal scenario. The problem, however, is if you are charged a ludicrous amount every year if you are only using it for ATM transactions, which is exactly what a vast majority of Pakistani card holders do. Currently, over 90% of the debit cards in Pakistan branded as Visa, MasterCard or China Union Pay, that is another international payment scheme, are used for ATM withdrawals only. In the year 2020, ATM withdrawals were 94% of the total transactions between ATMs, POS and e-commerce transactions in terms of volume, whereas POS transactions were only 5.35% and e-commerce transactions on payment cards were only 0.5% of the overall volume of transactions. Essentially, it is a question of the banks trying to sell cards to customers that they know the customers are unlikely to get their money's worth out of. Normally, a Visa card or a MasterCard would actually be a decent deal, but given the spending patterns, their overall impact makes little sense, and PayPak would have changed all of that. So the SBP came to the conclusion that it is not right for the banks to give a rupees 1000 or rupees 1500 annual fee debit card to someone who has an ATM use only. After these realizations, on April 6, 2016, Pakistan launched its own domestic payment scheme, being the 28th country in the world to have its own payment scheme. So here we have a payment scheme that was launched domestically as a low-cost alternative to Visa and MasterCard because all the charges were local, which provide the same functionality as international scheme branded cards, that is ATM withdrawals, which form the majority of the transactions, POS transactions, and e-commerce transactions that would be introduced a little later on by the domestic scheme. And while OneLink and regulators were happy at this success, there were long faces over at the banks, for whom PayPak was a competitor to the Visa and MasterCard cards that they had been using as brand names to justify high prices on their cards and were making billions. The 19 listed banks collectively made Rs 17 billion in credit and debit card fee in 2017. Rupees 19.1 billion in 2018 and a whopping rupees 22 billion in 2019. Now the credit card portfolio of each bank is very small and overall numbers for 2019 suggest that between debit and credit cards in the market, credit cards formed only 6% of the market share whereas debit cards formed the remaining 94%. So majority of the bank's earnings and that is a significant majority, over 90% that comes from debit cards.